Look at somebody next to you and say, don't forget to pray for our pastor. Amen. Praise God. Remain standing with me if you would. You know, at times like this, you find out who your friends really are. It's not just those who say they're your friend on some social media platform and use that as an opportunity to gossip about you every time they can. You know who your friends are, not in times of comfort and convenience, but in times of extremity, in times of necessity, in times of urgency. And your friends are someone that you can call upon in an emergency and they don't say, well, let me get back to you. Let me think about it. Let me see what I have to do here before I know whether I can help you there. No, your true friends are those when they get that call in the middle of a situation, they say, whatever I can do, however I can do it, whenever I need to do it, I'll be there. And my brothers and sisters, such a friend of our pastor and this ministry is here with us this morning. She got the call and she didn't think twice about it. She said, yes, tell me how I can help. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to the platform of World Harvest Church, Dr. Medina Pullings. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for Elder Canfield. Come on, let's bless God. I'm inspired every time I see you. Amen. There's always a word in his mouth, and we are so delighted to be here with you, World Harvest Church. And I'm so thankful that that dumb devil, hallelujah, could not prevail against Pastor Rod Parsley. Come on, we ought to give God the praise. And he never will prevail. Not against him, not against his wife, not against his children. Why? Because the saints are praying. God is so great on today. We're so thankful to be here. You may take your seats. You know, it's been a while and I'm just was thinking anyway, you know what? In a minute, I'm going to have to hop on a plane and take a trip to Ohio because I miss my family at WHC. Yes. I would say, you know what, I'm going to have to just book a flight. And there's been so much that's been going on, so much happening. God is doing so many amazing things. And now we are in 2018. You made it. You made it. You made it. Why? Because God has a plan for you. Would you turn your Bibles to Daniel, the seventh, the book of Daniel, seventh, the seventh chapter. And we're going to begin at the... 10th verse, Daniel 7 and 10. Hallelujah. Say amen when you have it. And we want to just say welcome to everyone that is connected in from around the world that is streaming in. You are here at the right time. God is going to speak to you. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. Somebody say the books. This is Daniel, his vision, and he's seeing God's heavenly court that is filled with books. Somebody say the books. Let's go really quickly over to Ezekiel, the third chapter. I'm reading from the Amplified Version, Ezekiel 3, beginning at the first verse. He said to me, son of man, eat what you find in this book. Eat the scroll, then go and speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat the scroll. And he said unto me, son of man, eat the scroll that I have given you to fill your stomach with it. Then I ate it and it was as sweet as honey 
to my mouth. Here again, we see books. Ezekiel has the book that is brought before him. Some version that says the scroll. Heaven has books. Books about nations, books about people. Books that are filled with the counsel of God's will. God counsels with himself. He doesn't ask anybody else for their opinion. Aren't you glad about that? Aren't you glad that God didn't take a poll and ask your friends and families and neighbors whether or not he should love you or favor you the way that he does? Aren't you glad that he didn't take a vote to decide whether or not he would choose you or use you or predestine you? God just decided. And what he decided is written. It's in a book. Well, let's go on over to Revelation really quickly. Revelation 10. Somebody say the books. Revelation 10 and 2. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. Let's go over to the 10th verse. Revelation uh, 2, Revelation 10, and then let's go down to the 10th verse. Let's start at the 9th verse. So Revelation 10 and 9. And I went unto the angel, and he said unto me, Give me a little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and make sure thy belly, make sure thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and I ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey, and as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must make again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. And I love the way the Amplified says many peoples, races, nations, languages, and kings. So here it is. John, the revelator, is presented with a book. A book that he is instructed to eat. Notice that each time the book is presented or a book from heaven is presented to the man of God, he is instructed to eat it, to digest it, to fill his belly with it. Notice that after the eating, there comes speaking, there comes prophesying, there is something to say. Ezekiel, eat, then speak. John, eat, then prophesy. I'm going to give you a fresh prophecy. I'm going to give you a fresh word. Lord, have mercy. So then we can all agree that eating comes before speaking. You know, we're in this month of many people around the world in, in the month of January are in consecration, fasting. What is fasting really all about? It is about the setting of the heart. It's not about, a, you know, losing weight or shedding some pounds and getting in shape and wearing the clothes in our closets that may be two sizes too small. It's not about appearance, but it's really, really, really about having revelation and being able to see. Fasting will give us the ability to see. Fasting will give us the ability to hear. Fasting will give us the ability to be sensitive to what God is doing because it's not like God is not speaking, but sometimes we're so fat with the flesh and carnality, carnal fat that had gotten in the way and it hinders the hearing, it plugs up the ears, it, it blinds the eyes so that we don't see what God is doing. And so when I think about here in the scripture, we're talking about eating the scroll, eat the book, eat the word of God. This is a wonderful time during fasting. I remember when I was uh, younger in the Lord and boy, I used to think that I was on a fast. But really, Elder Germain, I was not on a fast. I was on a diet because I would go all day long thinking about what I was going to eat at the end of the fast. I wasn't reading more scripture. I wasn't doing more praying. I was coming up with fancy meals to be able to have this Daniel fast. I, I would think about how it was going to be sauteed, how those vegetables were going to be, how the, meal, the whole eight hours at work would be thinking about while I was working what I was going to have at five o'clock and what I was going to eat on that Daniel fast. And then the Holy Ghost had to 
to teach me and say, you and you are fasting from food, but this is not a consecration because a consecration is going to entail what you set before your eyes, what you think about, what you meditate on, what you envision and what you spend time with. And if you just go without eating, but spend the day all day long with food, that is not a consecration. That's a way to come up with a new recipe book for Daniel fast. You can come up with a better version. But well, here we see that, that God has books. The scripture even says in the Psalms 139, 14 through 16, that all the days of your life were written before ever you live one. There is a whole book about you. You are so precious and you are so special and you are so called and you are so chosen and you are so thought about, hallelujah, that there's a whole book about you. The books of heaven, God has scripted about you. There is something uh, that is written that said you had to be born. You had to be born when you were born. You had to be created. Even if your mama and your daddy didn't like each other, doesn't even matter. You had to exist. You are no accident. Oh, I'm so glad that we are here in this 2018 because there's a demand for the book. There's a demand for what God has spoken over your life. We see the promises of God written in the word of God. We see in the 66 books, the books we see in these 66 books, God's promises, God's will, God's word concerning you, concerning your family, concerning your children, concerning your livestock, concerning your wealth, concerning your health, concerning salvation, concerning where he will take you, concerning that great day when our beloved Jesus Christ shall return. It is written. You don't have to walk around blind. You don't have to walk around like you don't know what's going on. It is written in the book what God has planned for you, where God is going to take you. Somebody say the book prevails. Well, you think the devil just going to sit around and say, oh, well, God has scripted uh, uh, and written about you and he's decided about you, said you'll be above only and not beneath, the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. Do you think the devil just stands by and say, ha ha, that's such a wonderful thing? Do you think he just sits by and say, oh yeah, healing is the children's bread? No, he is such a thief. He is such a coward. He is such a sneak. He doesn't come straight forward. He is a sneaky, crooked slithering something he never comes looking like a devil with a pitchfork but he will find a way to try to get to you to steal God's promises out of you see it is important for us to read the Word of God to meditate on the Word of God to study the Word of God because if you eat the Word of God and you are filled with the Word of God then you will speak the Word of God and you will release the Word of God now see 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 a man or a woman that is filled Filled with the word of God is dangerous. It's dangerous. You are the enemy's worst nightmare. He don't care about you running around the church. He don't care about us slapping each other high five. He doesn't care about you doing a cartwheel, a, a cartwheel, and, and, and doing a back step and a two steps. But what he cares about is whether or not the people of God will know who they really are, sit down and read the word of God, start the day off. Come on here. Hallelujah. Saying early when I seek thee, thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Come on, hallelujah. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path for you to get up in the morning and open the book up. See, see, he'll try to steal your day by having you inundated with situations and circumstance and this is happening and that is happening. So what is that to do? It is to rob you of the quality time with God. It is to rob you of having a time in the morning to sit down and take five minutes to just read the word of God. Set it before your eyes. Oh, come on here. See, the devil is threatened by a believer that will get up in the morning and jumpstart your day in the word of God. The devil is threatened by a believer, come on here, that will go in their car and while they're riding along the way, they're not listening to the boom, to the boom, to the boom and shoot them up, bang, bang. But the, he, is, he is threatened by the person that will put the word of God in their ears. You got to be intentional 
about this. You have to be intentional about feeding your faith. You have to be intentional about being nourished up and built up. Hallelujah. So that you can walk and be that living epistle, that living, breathing, walking word that God has called you to be. There is no angel that is coming to your house to spoon feed you the word of God and make you open your Bible. God has given you the strength you need to open your Bible. He's given you the intelligence you need to sit down and prioritize and make God the priority of your day that I'm going to get the word of God in me. So that's why we study and we buy CDs and we put the word of God in our cars because if I get built up in the word of God, then whatever comes up against me, I am armed and I am dangerous. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You are lethal to the enemy's tactics. Hallelujah. He is afraid of a man or a woman walking in the word. He is afraid of somebody not just quoting scriptures, but meditating on the word seeing that thing seeing the manifestation of that in your life by using the canvas of your imagination to explore where the word will take you oh he's afraid of somebody hallelujah how that takes the scripture and says my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory what does that look like the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the world and death that dwell therein. Well, that looks like me owing nobody nothing but to love them. That looks like lack is not in my house. That looks like abundance. That looks like overflow. That looks like nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Oh, use the word of God to paint a picture on the canvas of your imagination and visit your future today. Boy, God has scripted you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. And the Word became what? Flesh. And dwelt among us. Huh? Hallelujah. And go down to about the 14th verse, and it says, And we beheld His glory. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Word. He is the Logos. Oh, come on here. Hallelujah. The more of the word of God we get in us, the more we express the word. Hallelujah. The more we are activated. You're waiting for somebody to activate you. The word will activate you. Hallelujah. The word will get you going. The word of God will set you on fire. Hallelujah. Have you ever been studying in your house? Come on. Hallelujah. Just to study the word of God and you just was reading and all of a sudden you jumped up from the chair. Hallelujah. You weren't trying to put a sermon together. You was just eating. You got up and just ran around the table hallelujah my sons already know the clear path because sometimes if you get to read in the word of God Lord have mercy that thing is like octane food fuel super fuel in your body and your spirit and it ignites you and it'll cause you to feel like Superman you're like I could fly now you go from saying I can't make it oh I don't feel good oh I'm so down and you read the word of God and the word of God will set you straight and you're stand up and say hallelujah I'll strangle a demon I'll shut it down I'll crush it I'll run it over why because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world oh you can't touch this hallelujah my sons they just move on over sometimes I just run why because the word of God will make you take off Hallelujah. The word of God is stronger. Hallelujah. Sharper. Hallelujah. Than any two-edged sword. It's a hammer that breaks the rocks into pieces. Hallelujah. It's our mirror. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. It's our measuring rod. It tells us the standard. The word, the world does not tell us the standard. The world doesn't tell us what we should live and how we should walk and, and what we should render before God and what should be an offering before God and whether we should go to church or not or whether that's necessary or not or how we engage with our families and and how we serve at home and serve in our communities it is the word of God that is the measuring rod that tells us how we ought to live the standard is the word of God the word of God sets the standard the word of God is what we want to live up to the word of God governs our life the word of God has the final say some of you are stop arguing at home if you just go in the word oh, come on here some of the situations will be settled and dealt with if we 
just go in the word because the word of God will settle it. The word of God will answer it. Oh, somebody say the book prevails. There's more to you than what meets the eye. You are still here because God has more for you. And the devil hates what God has scripted about you. So he wants to keep you locked in complacency, in fear, in doubt, and, and, and being afraid of what others think about you. Some of you see yourself in another place and you've been afraid to move forth in what God has revealed to you. God has given you a picture. God has shown you where he's going to take you. And because you've already been functioning in a particular place already and had some level of success you are afraid to move from there but God said if you will move you're gonna see the unlimited you're gonna see what you've never seen before it takes faith to move forward it takes courage to move forward it takes faith to go into the unknown of where you have never been before God is saying launch out into the deep go forth and do what I've called you to do because what I put in you is greater than where you have been and now the time has come for you to come forward for you to break forth, for you to be, for you to exist, for you to evolve. Your last level is over and your new day is here. It's a new dimension and you must arise to it. You must rise to it. You must say yes to it because the book is speaking. The book is speaking. The book is speaking. When God gives you a picture, all that is, is a picture that is formed from words that have been written. You go to the movies to check out that latest hit in the cinemas. Before it hit the screen, it was a script. Before you hit the scene, you were a script. Oh yeah, you were a script. You were a script, you know. Christ is the word. You are a word. A word. That became a paragraph, not only a paragraph, but a chapter, not just a chapter, but a book. And some of you are like Job, you're like Job, Job chapter 1 and 2, he lost it all, lost his livestock, lost his family, hallelujah, lost his health, lost all of that. He was going through in the chapters, but by the time he got to chapter 42, he got double for his trouble. He got... Oh twice as much as he had before. See, some of you, you've gone through hell, you've gone through the trouble, you've gone through the pressing, you've gone through the pressure, and that was in your script. But what you don't realize is that the chapter changes it all. There's a new chapter, it's a new day in this new year, and God is bringing you into double for your trouble. Somebody say, I receive it in Jesus' name. Hell is afraid of your script. Because in your script, you're justified. What is justified? Proven innocent by way of acquittal. In your script, through the blood of Jesus Christ, there's nothing in your past that you have done that can stand up against you for your future. There's nothing in your past that can stand up to stop you from going into your God-ordained future because God justified you. Okay, okay, okay. So the blood of Jesus answered, remember we started, hallelujah, talking about the heavenly court, Daniel, right? And talking about the books in heaven. Well, when the devil tries to stand up against you and bring up your past, bring up what we've done for him, bring up how we've fallen short, well, maybe this doesn't, you know, fit with you. But I went through a long season of my life beating myself up in self-condemnation. Every time something went good, I would harp on where I messed up, where I fell short, what wasn't good enough. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But I didn't realize, Diana, that I was rejecting the power of the blood. Not the power of my actions, but the power of the blood. The blood that answers the accuser. The blood that responds in the courtroom and speaks up. Lord, have mercy. As our mediator, the blood that stands up and says, I died for her. I rose for her. It
it's justified, it's cleansed, it's washed away. Oh, somebody in here ought to praise God for the blood because without the blood of Jesus, your book would not prevail. Hell doesn't want you to come into where God has called you to. The blood gives you the power to become the blood of Jesus, not the blood of anybody else, not the blood of skunks, not the blood of dead animals, not the blood of chickens. That would not suffice, but the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Who gave you the authority to stand here? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. How can a girl from the boogie, boogie down Bronx stand and declare the message of Jesus Christ? The blood of Jesus. How can after we sinned and fell short and was on our way to hell with a pair of roller skates, how can we go forth and proclaim this great message? It's because of the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus gives you the power to perform the blood of Jesus gives you the power to exist the blood of Jesus gives you your purpose the blood of Jesus gives you your power to stand in a place because you're not there by your works you're not there by your own strength but you're there because you're grace to be there tell your neighbor there's grace all in my script what God has written about me, what he has decided about me, you better get ready huh? because the book prevails in your life. You are about to see the manifestation, hallelujah, of the breakthrough that God has spoken to you. When God spoke to you, that wasn't just something that just came out of the air. That's not just something that just haphazardly came to your mind and in your dream. When God came and spoke to you, that was coming out of the script of his plan for you. And you you better get ready because no weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. You better get ready. Hallelujah. Because the very thing that you heard, you are about to see. What God spoke to you is about to manifest. All of a sudden, it's going to show up at your house. All of a sudden, it's going to be at your door. All of a sudden, it's going to be in your bank account. All of a sudden, that pain in your body is gone. As a matter of fact, I declare tonight today that tonight when you go to bed somebody that's been in pain over the last 30 days you're gonna wake up pain free I declare somebody's getting a new kidney I declare your blood is being regulated I declare blood clots are just being dismissed and they're being dismantled and they are gone forever in the name of Jesus cancer is dried up in the name of Jesus When God gives you a word, he's telling you his will. Oh, come on. In these 66 books is his will, his promise. Hallelujah. I want you to go, oh, God, show me the books in heaven. Here you are, right here. You always got to break it down for somebody. Show me. The, here you are, right here. Now, what the Holy Spirit will do will, is break down to you what it is come on uniquely that god has for you to do you were not born to be average you were not born to just be like you don't even exist no 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 you were born to be a beacon of light to be a place of hope as a matter of fact god is going to use the window display of your life god is going to allow sinners to look in and see the goodness of god god is going to allow hurting people that are in pain and distressed and ready to give up and ready to take their own lives and but they're going to know what you have been through and they're going to see through the window of your life the goodness of God the repairing power of God you wonder why you had to go through that publicly you wonder why you had to deal with that you wonder why you had to be ostracized why you had to be lied on why you had to have that setback that wasn't just a setback that was just a hiccup you better keep it moving God was just giving them something interesting to see in the window of your life because they're going to look in and see that God is a 
deliverer. They're going to look in and see that God is a healer. They're going to look in and see that God is a restorer. They're going to look in and see that God is a way maker. They're going to look in and see that God is a provider. They're going to look in and see that he is a lifter. They're going to look in and see that he is a helper. That he is a very present help in the time of trouble. You better take, come on, stay tuned. Because there's more to see. See, some of you have capped it off as if you've seen the be all of God. But I'm here to tell you, you haven't seen nothing yet. God is going to blow your mind. You better get ready for the big because the book prevails and the book says that there's so much more that's about to manifest in your life. Now in Luke the 18th chapter, you see the woman who is going with the unjust judge. He don't regard God, he don't care about God, he don't fear God. Isn't that just how some places we go as we transact business and go throughout the day? And you hallelujah and thank you Jesus and reverencing God and you walk around and you just meet some people they just act like God doesn't even exist as a matter of fact they tell you they don't believe in God and we know that God still loves them right and we are called to love them and so this is the parable that Jesus gives about the unjust judge in Luke the 18th chapter notice if you will notice if you will this prayer this example of prayer this parable of prayer is used with what type of illustration a courtroom the courtroom. What's in the courtroom? Books. Okay. Huh? Laws. Legislation. Hallelujah. See, some of this stuff we've been hooking and shining about. And, ooh, I'm a war. I'm a get you. I'm a punch you, devil. You don't need to do all of that. Hallelujah. You just need to go to court. Through prayer, you need to go to court. You need to access the books of heaven. Hallelujah. And go and, and file a complaint. Come on here. And say in the courtroom, this is not how it's supposed to be. This is not how it should exist. The word of God says this and this is what I'm going to have you got to take it before God you got to pray the word of God you got to pray what he said and so this woman goes in she goes to court to get avenged of her enemy she goes to court to deal with the situation got to go to court the judge is not thinking about her she keep on going back but she don't care she don't care about no what do you care about no no don't be afraid of no no, don't be afraid of no. I used to be so afraid of no. Like, oh, no, I ain't even going to ask. I'm not even going to try. Well, I don't want them to say no. What can no do to you? When the promises of God are yea and amen. You already have the yes. You already have the amen. You already have the approval. When God gives you his word and he gives you his promise, you already have the yes. So what the yes will do is locate the yes. It may not happen the first time, but guess what? When you already have the yes, you won't quit. You won't give up because God already told you yes. You'll keep on coming back. You'll keep on bouncing back. You'll keep on showing up. You'll keep on knocking at the door. Why? Because I'm not looking for a yes. I came with a yes. Okay. Some of you walking around acting like you're looking for the world to give you their endorsement, to give you an approval. I'm not looking for an endorsement from the world. I've already been endorsed by my heavenly father. I've already been given his approval. I've already been given his, come on here, his hand. I've already been given the favor. I've already been given the anointing. What do I care about whether or not the world say I approve of you? As a matter of fact, I'm going to shout when they say I don't approve because I know that my reward is greater in heaven. Oh. Chasing waterfalls, running down dead end streets. That's a worldly lifestyle. But we know in the kingdom is happiness, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost that has nothing to do with the things of this world. Oh, have mercy. It has everything to do with a place in God. She shows up at the court, keep on going. And that judge said, Wait a minute, let me let this woman go. I don't regard God, nor do I care about man, but in case. This woman weary me. In the original text, in case she whipped me, beat me. In other words, I don't know why a woman who is a widow does not have a man as her covering could go into a courtroom and scare the judge. You gotta know when you are walking 
in the word of God. You are more than a dress and stilettos. You are more than man a pair of gaiters and a blazer jacket. But when you walk in, Lord, the word phew, walks in with you. Phew, walks in with all of heaven is on your side in other words the entire place is taken over hallelujah by the power the magnetic power of God you gotta know hallelujah that God will cause the very area to be taken for his glory she walks in there and that man is like I'm giving you what you want somebody's about to go to court and get what you want. You're about to go to court and the judge is gonna rule in your favor. Why? Because you went to the higher court, the heavenly court, and all that lower court activity is subject to the supreme authority of the power of God. Somebody need to praise God because this lower level activity is subject to the supreme rulership and power of God. It's about to be settled in your favor. So when God gives you his word, he's now saying, man right there in the black jacket, where it says God, the D and the God, God is showing you, okay, this is where you're going to take dominion. When God speaks to you in one place and shows you you're existing in another place, he has revealed his will to you and now summons your faith to exist in that place. Your faith doesn't mean to be channeled everywhere it needs to be channeled where you're called where you're going who he's told you to stand for so when you have a loved one who is stricken and addicted and and and, and given over to drugs and God's promise is with you to deliver He's not asking you to look at how it's going down in the natural. He has now told you his will and has called your faith to show up in that place. You're in a small place now, but your faith has been summoned to the big place. I want you to move from that second row and stand right there. You were over there. Now you're standing as an example of your faith, which is now right here. Somebody in here, God said you made the shift already. You already made the shift in your faith. You already moved. You already see it. You already said, yes, Lord. And you've been looking at it on the canvas of your imagination saying be it unto me according to your word yes lord so it is as your word has spoken it so it is in me and you better get ready because you're gonna dominate in a place that you have never been in before you're going from underneath to being on the top you're not just gonna fit in but God is going to use you to establish kingdom authority in that place. Somebody give God the praise. In closing. So he says, how much more, Jesus in Luke the 18th chapter, how much more would a father avenge his own elect who cry unto him day and night? <sighs> Prayer is the portal, the pipeline, the vehicle for heaven to earth. He says God will do it speedily. Speedily he will avenge. Speedily.
speedily he will deal with it through prayer you will access God's will and God's will will prevail when we cry unto him day and night prayer will change the thing prayer will cause the shift that's why he said my house shall be a house of prayer not a house of concerts not a house of cookies not a house of coffee a house of prayer coffee is nice but it don't bring a breakthrough coffee is nice but it doesn't bring deliverance it's great christian hospitality but if you want to see a breakthrough pray if you want to see revival pray if you want chains broken pray if you want to see your marriage restored pray if you want to drive the devil out pray when i went to the counselor did you pray when i met with a life coach did you pray you done met with the life coach you done had your starbucks you know, sat down and had tea, but I'm telling when you, when you go to God and you take his word and you present to him the legislation of what he has legislated, what he has done, what he has spoke, what he has written, and you stand before God with his word and you cry out to him, to him, to him, not Pookie and them, not Ray J, not Jackie, not Dr. Phil, God bless him, I really love him, not your favorite TV host, not Medina Pullings, not Pastor Rod Parsley, when you cry out to him, I tell you to go in your home where the devil has been weak in hell. Y'all coming to church, lifting up your hands, praising, singing, and y'all barely speaking at home. But I dare you to go home and hold hands and pray and watch God break you free. Watch God put revival in your house. Watch God bring a supernatural turnaround. Somebody said the book prevails. And through prayer and the studying of the word is how you see that. You have to show up to it. Hallelujah. The scripture says that the heir will live like a slave when he is young. He lives under the same rules as the slave when he is an heir, when he is immature. The believers who are heirs of salvation and every benefit that goes along with it will live like slaves until we grow up until we study the word until we believe the word until we research it and meditate on it and then as your eyes are enlightened through the word of god as to who you really are you're not gonna let the devil punk you you're not gonna let him put you in time out you're not gonna let him tell you that you're not when god has already told you that you are you're gonna be supercharged in the holy ghost and you're gonna stand up and beat the unbeatable hallelujah deny the under you're gonna see the invisible why because you got the word on the inside of you we were in prayer in May in an all-night shut-in praying all night and in the prayer we started praying and we're praying praying and the Holy Ghost unctionizes how many know the Holy Ghost will tell you how to pray there's no distance in prayer you could be in America and your prayer hit China, just like that. So we're in prayer, and, and we needed a larger facility. We needed space, and you know, I was gonna pray according to our plans and things that we saw that we could get done. And so I started to pray like that, and the Holy Ghost nudged me and said, don't do that. Pray what I show you. So we shifted from the limited to the unlimited and what we began to speak was what heaven had scripted see the holy ghost never prays amiss 
he's always bullseye. So we started just praying about the space in the sanctuary and in the children's area for the kids because we didn't have an area for the children and started praying for the kitchen and, and started praying uh, uh, for, for the community uh, uh, areas that we would have and, and, and for the rooms we would have for the community. And, and we started slapping high five and slap people started coming out and slapping high five. This is in a prayer meeting. You know, a lot goes on in the prayer meeting. The books are unfolded in the prayer meeting. Oh God, the, the, the word, Lord have mercy, manifests in the prayer meeting. And so we prayed like that. A couple of months later, opportunity opened up that we didn't know was right around us to get a building. Not only to get a building, but this building, we were in 17,000 square feet. This building and this campus was 77,000 square feet. Now I know this is a mega campus, but I want you to think from our 17,000 to 77,000. Think about your square foot home multiplied that much. And so it was in bankruptcy and the judge had ruled for it to be sold. It was already a church in the community. It just was outdated, needed to be updated, had been uh, not taken care of for years. So we said, okay, a church needs to be in that community. We need a larger space. And then we heard there were some developers who had entered in a bid to get the facility to knock it down and build apartments. So what are you going to do with the church? Knock it down. So now you really ticked us off. You want to knock the church down to build apartments in this neighborhood over here that needs a church. So we said, oh no, we're going to go in. So we went and met with the, met with the trustees that was over the, um, the bankruptcy trustees, sat down, shook hands had an agreement for the next morning to seal the deal, called the next morning, no answer. Hmm, somebody said, that's strange. You don't want to pick up the phone now? Didn't we have an agreement last night? What happened? What happened? You have amnesia? What happened is we didn't know that somebody else had outbidded us, the developer. So even though they told us that we had an agreement and that we were going to seal it the next morning, so we were going to bring our certified check to move forward with the deal, they're not answering. Days are going on. They still won't answer. Now, we got a word from God that the building is ours, but they're not answering. You got a word that is yours, but they're not answering. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't send you the release yet. They didn't give you the approval yet, but God already told you yes. So we show up by keep calling. See, that's our faith in action. Faith, showing up, calling, calling, calling. They're not answering. Ten days later, they're not answering. You know what that means? They really have made up their mind. Now, the court date is already scheduled to go back before the judge who approved the sale, and they were supposed to announce who they're selling to. It's in the newspaper. Who's going to get it? The developer or United Nations Church. So we're on the phone having a nice heated conversation. My husband is on there, and, and I would like to say we was just whispering, but we wanted, it was getting loud, and it was getting loud, it was getting loud, yeah, it was getting loud, it was getting so loud. I tell you, at one meeting we were talking, not only, I went, I went from sitting on a chair to my knees being in a chair to almost being on top of the table. And my husband was on the phone talking, and we had like this little notebook, and so we called the strategies room or the war room, whatever you want to call it. We're in there, and so we're writing notes while the conversation is going on. And so finally the trustee says, well, listen, their pockets are deeper than your pockets. Oh, really? So my husband responds and says, our pockets are deeper than their pockets. Our pockets are so deep, it runs through the earth, up into the heavens. Now, I'll be honest, when he first said, our pockets are deeper than their pockets, I'm like, they are? 
You hiding money from me? No. And so they asked for this astronomical number for us to put down. They said, listen, if you're going to do the deal, you're going to give us over $400,000 down today, not tomorrow. You're going to give it to us today. And so basically they were trying to shoo us away. Get out of here, little kids. Gone. Gone. Because the developer is the big boy. So they're sitting there going through that, putting that up there. It's playing out in the news. Who's going to get it? It's there in the Richmond Times. Who's going to get the church? United Nations Church or the developer? So we went on over there and tried to move every angle. When God tells you yes, you just start moving all the ways you know to work and do what you can do and watch God do the rest. Isn't that right? So we was taking every angle we knew. So we sent one of our dream team members to go over there and talk to the developers to talk about how much the community needs a church. And that uh, developer turned around and said, listen, this is about business for us. This is about business. And they shouldn't have been in the situation that they were in. And we're going to build these apartments over here. Okay. It was business for them, but it was also business for us. It was business for them, but it was kingdom business for us. Theirs was for profit, but us, ours was for purpose. Theirs was about making money, but ours was about souls being saved. And so it's like, okay, you better watch out because we're going to run over you. And if you think we're just going to disappear, you can forget about it. We're going to keep on coming back. So we kept on and kept on. Well, then the church started going, marching around the facility, marching around the campus. The church started walking around it and just praying and interceding and marching children men women boys and girls started walking around that building praying well after the church finished praying this is why you got to pray for your leader all of a sudden that sunday in church after church my husband said he said i'm getting ready to go on a power play i said a what a power play that's a hockey term he is black i don't know what he's doing watching hockey but he watches it all the time and i said a power play he said i'm going on a power play tomorrow morning i'm gonna send an email and he said i'm gonna i'm gonna send an email in for 2.9 5,000 2.9 5,000 so 2 million nine hundred thousand five thousand two point nine five thousand what kind of ridiculous number is that well he went early in the morning and sent the email all of a sudden ring 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 now y'all weren't calling back you weren't answering our phone calls you weren't sending us no email but that 2.95 did something he had outbid it the developer by five thousand dollars prayer will give you supernatural intelligence supernatural intelligence so now because they can't just get rid of us and remember we got to go back before the judge chat because the judge approved the property to be sold which was the church and now you're only going to show who you selling it to okay so you can't act like we don't exist because we have a paper trail that prove that we've been in this thing all along see the devil is trying to get you to eliminate yourself because if you stick with it you're gonna see the victory the devil is trying to make you X yourself out but let me tell you something you better meet resistance with resilience and say I'm not going nowhere as a matter of fact full throttle ahead My faith is my super fuel to run you over. So now the deal is ours. We get approved to get the building. All that we went through. So we go there and the developer, one of the team members from our church happened to be in one of the buildings with the management. The management said, how you doing? She said, I'm doing good. She said, listen, I want you to come to my church. We write down the block. What's the name of your church? United Nations Church. You go to that church? Yes. So tell us, 
Who told your pastor how to outbid us? Who tipped him off? They thought they had an insider that went and told him what the number should be. When, remember, check this out. When we had our agreement, we never knew we were outbidded because they told us this number will satisfy it so we're good. Bring the certified check tomorrow and this deal is yours. So we're thinking we're not too low. Nobody ever told us that because they didn't really want to be bothered with us. That little church. They wanted to deal with the developers, the, the power folks, the money people, the folks with the backing. Let's deal with them and let's just make them believe they are right. So we never knew, but it, through prayer, we found out. And then they want to know, who told you? You about to see supernatural increase by a who told you. You're about to expand greatly by who told you. You're about to see great increase by who told you. You're about to see your enemy annihilated by who told you. God Almighty. Stringing us along, we didn't know. But we went to the heavenly court. While the stuff was going on in the lower court. The lower court activity. You gonna behave. All y'all trustees. We honor you, judge. We thank God for you. The Supreme Court, the higher court, the heavenly court has ruled in your favor. And what is owed you is about to show up in this property. Not only is it 77,000 square feet, but it has the sanctuary that can seat nearly 2,000 people. It has a state-of-the-art kitchen. It has a banquet hall. It has a children's wing. It has a standalone building with a daycare. There is already 300 children that come from the community to play in the gym. Did I tell you the best part yet? It came with over 100 members that were sitting there hurting, broken, wounded, with no leadership. You are about to walk into something that's going to blow your mind. You better know the book prevails and the book calls for all of a sudden breakthrough, all of a sudden increase, all of a sudden expansion, all of a sudden breakout, all of a sudden explosion, all of a sudden, I'm telling you the book of Acts.